Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning some basic item management so your Valheim session can be more fun. Valheim is one of those games that can have a lot of item management, a lot of looking at UI and moving stuff around, and it can be really, really overwhelming, especially to new players who don't know what to expect. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to categorize all of the different kinds of items that you might find. Depending on where you are in Valheim, you may be able to make these reinforced chests, or you'll be able to make black metal chests, or you'll just be able to make the smaller chest. Then for each category, make two chests, and that should be enough, okay? Now let's get to the categories so you know what to expect. There's roughly 13 different categories of items split up into equal parts. There's leather, monster drops, eyes and resin, wood, wealth, metal and ore, stone, trophies, gear, farming, item ingredients, item ingredients, and then finally, our consumables, which are food and potions. In addition to these 13 different categories of items, there's also areas that you should know about. There's the living area. This is where you'll spawn after you die. So you want there to be food and consumables in a chest nearby. The next area is your main crafting area. Crafting is the forge, so metal crafting, and the workbench. Wood crafting for the most part. To make stuff, you're gonna need all sorts of different items. So it's sort of necessary that your crafting area has a storage area in it. In addition to this crafting area, the third area to keep in mind is your forging area. This is where you're gonna make coal and use that coal to convert ore into metal bars like this. Your forge, ideally, is right next to everything else, so the forge can just be part of your item management area. But some people like to have their forge over at their dock where the boat is, or somewhere else. And then the final area to keep in mind is your kitchen. Your kitchen will need to have a bunch of storage, because maybe a quarter to a third of all the items you find are related to making more food. And the final area to keep in mind is a planting area. So there's actually five areas for your base. And all you need for the planting area is a small chest that has a cultivator and any seeds that you currently have access to. And now that we know what each category is, let's look at each category in detail so you know exactly what I mean when I say leather or metal, etc. Leather is wolf pelts, deer pelts, boar pelts, lox pelts, and troll pelts. Monster drops is everything else that's dropped by a monster, except leather and eyes and resin. So we have stuff like frost glands, needles, feathers, guck, roots, chain, ooze, bone fragments, wolf fangs, and buke berries. These are all monster drops. Eyes and resin is just Grey Dwarf eyes and resin. You get so much of this stuff that it deserves its own category. Then we have wood, which is all the different kinds of wood. I got some birch seeds in here, but they're in the wrong place. Then there's wealth, which is anything you can sell for money. That means silver necklace, ruby, amber, amber pearl, etc. Then there's metals and ores. This chest should be next to your forge, and it should have coal, ore, and metal. That way, whenever you need to, you can just burn everything, get the coal, put it all in here, and even if you're encumbered, it's a really short distance between where you smelt the stuff and the chest. So you can be encumbered and work and it doesn't matter. Then we have stone, which is stone, obsidian, chitin, flint, and black marble. All the monster trophies you'll get plenty of. And then all of your gear and equipment. This usually tends to be filled up with older gear, and then you put the newer gear on an item stand. We have our farming section that needs a cultivator and all of your seeds, and you may also want to put your fishing stuff there too. 
The planting area needs place to plant different things. And you can also breed boar and that kind of thing. But be careful, because they're out in the open, so they'll probably be killed. That's why I always keep a, a, a secret stash where I hide the other boar. So there's two boar buried underneath this stone here. That way, when these boar get killed or whatever happens, I always have other starred boar, so I don't need to go find new boar. Then there's our ingredients section near our kitchen. I find that it's easiest to categorize the ingredients into two categories. The red ingredients, meats and mushrooms and raspberries, and then everything else. This separates everything into roughly half, and it's really easy to distinguish. This is all red. You can just look at it and see that it's red. Whereas this stuff, it's blue, yellow, green, orange. These are not red. And then the final part of our storage is the ready to eat food. And this place needs to be right next to your beds. That way, whenever you get up, you won't run around like a lunatic like me right now and get killed by something because you only have 25 health. All right, that's it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that this video helps you better organize yourself in Valheim so you spend less time freaking out about your inventory and more time building and exploring and finding all of the awesome stuff that Valheim has to offer. If you want to support my work, then consider checking out my tutorial all about purchasing your own dedicated server for Valheim from Zap. This is a great way to play Valheim. The main benefit is that your friends can log onto the server and build stuff and do stuff when you do something else. So it makes the Valheim experience feel a little bit more like an MMO compared to just regular multiplayer where you can invite people to your world, but they can only join your world if you're currently on it. That's the main benefit of having a dedicated server. And there's some other things you can do with them, but that's the main thing to keep in mind if you're considering getting one. And if you do get one, don't waste your money. Don't get something for more than two or three months because most Valheim playthroughs are only going to last that long anyway. So you don't need to get a server that's going to last for like a whole year or something unless you're really confident that you're already playing, you're already paying for it, then that might be a good option for you. All right? But otherwise, stick with just a month or two and that's going to be all that you need. Thanks for watching and comment below if there's anything you'd like me to make a tutorial about. I love to make Valheim tutorials. It's such a beautiful, awesome game and making tutorials is one of my favorite ways to play it. See you next time. Bye.